Hi, I'm Nathan from Serious Geeks, and this video is going to cover the rules that have been teased to us by the Warhammer community team regarding the new Sisters of Battle model, Morvin Vol. I do apologise if my pronunciation is off there. It's a very new model, and 40k is replete with instances of very difficult to pronounce words. Anyway, let's check out her stat line. That's a pretty good stat line. It's fairly standard of what you expect from a big beast. It's a little bit weaker than the likes of Gilliman or a Primarch in general, but that, you know what? That's what they are, they're Primarchs. Strength 5, Toughness 5 though is a benchmark and it's a decent amount of attacks. Weapon skill 2+, plus, Ballistic skill 2+, plus. it's a good stat line. And movement of 8, which is very good. It's, it's again, it's keeping up with faster moving units and it's a deadly combination with such a decent close combat stat line. Also, the thing has eight wounds, which is kind of critical because it's a decent number of wounds. It's essentially the equivalent of a Dreadnought. This model is going to be tough to take down and cannot be targeted by shooting. Not very easily anyway, and that is very crucial. Similarly to that, if you look at these special rules, four up and runnable save. Well, we kind of expect that from an Imperial character of such high standing. Not quite as high as Gilliman's, but, you know, he is a Primarch. Kind of interestingly... 4 plus save against mortal wounds per mortal wound loss. That's very good. It means that you are a lot more survivable when it comes to things like the Thousand Suns, which are getting a new codex, Grey Knights if you come up against them, or generally anything that is going to try and mortal wound spam you to try and put you down. The Nightbringer, for example, will try and use his abilities to kill this model off as a priority, and it's nice to have a defense against it. Similarly, the Holy Aegis, is going to be very useful for preventing large numbers of wounds getting through when you do failure saves. You're going to be halving the amount of damage taken. Again, it's very effective. With 8 wounds, 2 plus armor save, 4 plus invulnerable save, 4 plus against mortal wounds, you're going to be very hard to take down anyway. And added to the fact that 2 damage weapons are going to go down to damage 1, yeah, it's really good. She is essentially going to be incredibly tough to take down, which is what you're going to expect from a model that is going to be on the front lines. And being on the front lines, let's have a look at her close combat weapon. The Lance of Illumination has two different modes, Horde Killing and Big Killing. The Horde Killing melee profile essentially doubles the amount of attacks, so she goes up to 10 attacks. Weapon skill, 2+, plus, as we know, so she's going to be hitting with most of those. It's going to be strength for the user, which is 5, which is okay, it's not bad, and it's going to be minus 2 AP. Good for killing horde units. Alternatively, if you're up against big targets or marines, you've got the Lungeon Strike, which is a damage 3, strength plus 3, so it's strength 8 in practice, and it has a minus 3 AP. So it's very effective. It also has the special ability to cause mortal wounds on a wound roll of a 6+. So ultimately, you're going to do a lot of damage with this weapon. If you're against a single target with the Mortal Wound additions, you're going to cause a bit of damage. You've got three damage apiece. It's not going to be the Killing Knights anytime soon, but it can be the Coupe de Grace, and it can do a lot of damage to characters. It is essentially a very effective weapon. You've got a Dreadnought Close Combat weapon there. I like this weapon loadout. It means that this character is very good at chopping through infantry. It's also very good at chopping through big targets. There's nothing that you can really tie her up with. This also means that she's incredibly flexible. She can take on just about anyone in close combat and not be wasted. So ranged attacks, this unit also has ranged attacks, which is very nice to see. We have essentially a Cyclone Missile Launcher, the Paragon Missile Launcher. It's just the same stats as a Cyclone Missile Launcher, but that's good. It means that you're going to be firing anti-tank missiles, or if you're against infantry, say you're against Gene Steeler Colt, anti-infantry missiles and frag missiles, you're going to be firing what you need to on the way in. Coupled with a charge, this could be a very effective way of killing a unit or killing a target. She also appears to have a heavy bolter, which we don't know the full rules for, but it looks like a standard heavy bolter and they've not mentioned it, so I imagine it's just a heavy bolter. Heavy bolters are good, they kill space marines good, they kill infantry good, and combined with all her other weapons, it's a nice little addition. So that's just the killing potential. If we just look at the killing potential of this model, She's very effective. I don't know what the points cost will be. We, Of course we don't. We don't know if there's some more rules attached, but she's a very effective looking unit. And I would imagine she's going to be deadly on the tabletop. My friend actually wants to collect Sisters of Battle, the Adeptor Soriatus, and I'm a bit worried about it. I'm sure Gilliman can do something against her. I don't know. 
Speaking of which, she does give buffs like Gilliman to the units around her, the Adepta Soriatus units, and that includes basically being a Space Marine Captain and Chapter Master all rolled into one. If anything, she's actually superior to that. So to units within six, they can re-roll wound rolls and hit rolls of one like a Lieutenant or a Captain might do in a Space Marine Army. That's comparable to Gilliman, although he gives full re-rolls. He only gives re-rolls to one to wound. She can also choose a single core unit and they can re-roll all hit rolls and all wound rolls, which becomes very powerful. That could very well be a character, which means it essentially affects her as well. She can choose herself, which means that she's going to re-roll hits and wounds, which makes her very deadly. Of course, she might strategically want to give it to a unit around her, and that is, again, it just adds to the flexibility. So overall, I think she is a very effective character. We don't know what other rules she's going to provide, but I think in the meantime, looking at what she's got, she's going to be deadly on the tabletop, and she's going to be a real force multiplier for your Adeptus Soriatus. The real question is, what are the points, and is she going to be a Lord of War? Most likely, she's going to be a Lord of War. So it remains to be seen how effective she is. People still are unhappy with Gilliman being the Lord of War and at 380 points. But, you know, there are units he can be effective with. There are army lists he can be very effective combining with. So we'll see what happens. I don't think she's going to be setting the entire internet alight, but I think she's going to be a very nice addition to a Battle Sisters force. Let me know what you think in the comments below anyway. I really like the fact that there's a complete range that's been finished for the Battle Sisters. I think if they carry on doing that with other armies, which have perhaps been a little bit neglected, we'll have a very good night edition. Please like and subscribe, help me grow the channel, and I'll catch you all soon. Peace out.